Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba'd. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant relief and forgiveness and raise up the Muslims in righteousness everywhere, whether they be those who are oppressed in Iraq or Afghanistan, whether they be our brothers and sisters who are being slaughtered in Syria. May Allah have mercy upon them. May it be our brothers and sisters who are slaughtered and being persecuted in Bur uh, Burma. May it be our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted in Ethiopia. And so I want to dedicate this and speak about something about what we've recently heard about what's going on in Ethiopia. And this is news from Ethiopia. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy and bless the Muslims everywhere and protect them from the evil of the shayateen from amongst the men and the jinn and may Allah protect them from ahl al-kufr wa zandaka and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them from ahl al-bidah because often you'll see that ahl al-bidah and ahl al-kufr are one the people of disbelief and the people of innovation a lot of times they work together to hurt ahl al-sunnah and hurt the muslims everywhere and this is what the case what we're seeing in ethiopia right now we see that the jamaat al-ahbash abdullah ibn harari his group this deviant group that has nothing to do with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we've made that clear in many of our sittings and it's very clear from what the ulama of Ahl Sunnah have spoken about them and it's very clear from their own statements that they go against what the Muslims believe and so here's what's going on in Ethiopia to our brothers and sisters it says Ethiopian Muslims killed for sadaqah at least four Muslims were shot dead when Ethiopian security forces stormed into a mosque in the capital Addis Ababa to disrupt preparations for a citywide program called Sadaka, meaning the feast. Sources told that Ethiopian federal police stormed the Awali Mas Mosque uh, late Friday, July 13th and attacked Muslim volunteers inside. Sources said security forces fired tear gas and beat Muslims gathering inside the building. At least four people were reportedly killed in the attack, while several others were seriously injured. The volunteers were preparing for food and drinks for a citywide program called Asadaka, meaning the feast, on Sunday, July 15th. Witnesses also confirmed the brutal police attack on Muslims inside the mosque. They broke the door and entered and started shooting at Muslims. Uh, Ahmed Adina Jebel representing a, Mus uh, a mosque community group, told Bloomberg. Many were attacked and they arrested almost all of those there. After a call to prayers, Muslims who gathered in response to the incident were involved in further clashes, he said. Police closed all roads leading to Awalia from all directions. Thousands of Ethiopian Muslims streamed towards the capital's largest mosque on Saturday in response to distress calls that were heard from minarets throughout Friday night following the police attack. Ahmedin said thousands of Muslims gathered at the mosque in Mercato area to demand the release of all those arrested. Friday's attack follows the arrest of two members of a committee selected by Ethiopian Muslims to formally voice protests of Muslims against government's interference in their religious affairs. Again, a non-Muslim uh, government who's getting in Muslim affairs. Where's the democracy? What happened to this freedom of speech? What is the right to gather and protest? What happened to all these things? But instead, let's see what the non-Muslim Christian government is doing to the Muslims in Ethiopia. So, in April, four Muslims were killed in clashes with police in southern Ethiopia. Uh, in southern Ethiopia, protests at the arrest of a Muslim preacher. Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country, is home to 60% Christian. We know this is not true. And about 34% Muslim. Uh, definitely not true. According to CIA Factbook, Muslim unity. Several feasts of unity have been organized across Ethiopia. The feasts of unity are seen as a uh, practical response to the government's attempt to divide the Muslim population along sectarian lines, accusing some Salafi Muslims, which of course this is batal, this is falsehood, of extremism tendency. And we've already made clear many times as Salafis. Salafis meaning those people who adhere to what the Quran says and what the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says and according to what the Sahaba were upon, they're the farthest from extremism. They're the far farthest from bid'ah. They're the farthest from zandaka. They're the farthest from killing and wanton violence and evil and, and, and worshiping graves and other falsehoods and evil uh, practices. That it says... Awali is the center of Muslim protests against attempts by the Ethiopian government to interfere in their religious affairs. How do they interfere in religious affairs? Here's how it goes. Muslims say the government is spearheading a campaign in collaboration with the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs to indoctrinate their community with the ideology of a sect called the Ahbash, Wa'iyadh billah minhum. 
And this, uh, the government of Ethiopian Premier uh, Minis Zanawi has put the Ahbash in charge. They put the Ahbash in charge of the religious affairs of the Ethiopian Muslims. Battle, enforcing battle. Falsehood, enforcing falsehood. Evil, enforcing evil. The government of Ethiopian Premier said, uh, the government of Ethiopian Muslims say the government move is a violation of the Constitution which prevents the government interference in religious affairs. Where's the democracy? Federal Republic of Ethiopia, what happened? What happened to your democracy? Yeah, shooting? Imprisoning? Appointing for religious affairs? Where's this freedom of, of religious and freedom of speech? Muslims also accuse the Ahbash of launching an indoctrination program in predominantly Muslim areas, forcing attempt forcing people to attend religious training camps or risk police interrogation and possible arrests. Founded by Ethiopian Lebanese scholar Sheikh Abdullah al hariri Founded. We don't need the founders. Islam is from Allah. And it is from the Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And according to the methodology of the Salaf Asali. That's it. We don't need the Khwana Muslimin. We don't need Jamaat Tabliq. We don't need Sufi. We don't need this group or that group or this one or that one. And we don't need to be founded by some Ethiopian Lebanese scholar named Sheikh Abdullah al hariri Ahbash. It's seen by the West as a friendly alternative. So this is in conjunction according uh, with, the, with what dis disbelievers, they want this. They love this. They love to see discord between the Muslims. It, it benefits and makes their hearts feel good because then they can keep us divided. But we don't accept that. We don't like sectarianism. We don't call to sectarianism. We call to unification of the Muslims based upon love, based upon tawheed, based upon loving Allah, based upon worshiping Allah, based upon following the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's see. So the West loves this. Seen by the West as a friendly alternative to Wahhabi ideology. I don't know what that is. I've been looking for it, still trying to figure this one out. Which the West sees as extreme and militant. Muslims say Ahbash imams are being brought over by Lebanon to fill the majlis and teach Ethiopians that Wahhabis are non-Muslims. Look at these people, preachers of takfir, preachers of, 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 of worshipping graves. And go to their books and you'll find it. There's tons of research out. Go to their websites in English. Go to their websites in Amharic. Go to their websites in Arabic. You'll see the grave worship. What kind of, this sounds like the, the, the pagans that we have in, in America. We have the Wiccan group. We have other people who want to worship... Uh, these gods and the ones who want to worship the dead and the ones who worship the, the cow. What is this? Muslims are far from that. Islam preaches the worship of Allah alone. We believe in monotheism. We don't believe in grave worship. And we don't accept the interference of no one. And we don't accept sectarianism. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, If tarakat al-Yahud ala ithna wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara ala ithna tain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa tiftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fi al-nar ala wahida, kullna man hiya ya Rasulullah, kala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al-yawm. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Jews who break into 70, uh, 71 sects, the Christians 72 sects, and my ummah, meaning the Muslims who break into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except for one. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is what the Sahaba, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'in, asked. And he said, those who are upon my sunnah and that which my companions are upon today. This is what we are upon. We believe in the oneness of Allah. And we don't believe in riots. And we don't believe in, in, in going out and protesting. And we don't believe in just political disturbances. But we also don't believe in people interfering in our affairs. We don't believe in terrorism. We don't believe in extremism. We don't believe in grave worship. We don't believe in worshiping the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't be, believe in worshiping the jinn. We don't ta'awan with the jinn. We don't ta'awan with devils. We don't work with the shayateen. We don't work with any evil. We don't work with Ahl Bid'ah. We don't work with Ahl Kufr. But we believe in La ilaha Allah. We believe in the worship of Allah alone, and we believe in the Tawheed of Allah, and we believe in Kitab Allah, and we believe in Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and may Allah help the Muslims everywhere and protect them from the harm of the Shayateen, from the men and the jinn, and may Allah bless the Muslims everywhere and, and, and grant us forgiveness, and that has put us in this humiliated state, because we don't accept the interference from anyone. No one can cause sectarianism and this, this evil and, and, and force us into extremism. We're far from it. We hate this and we hate these ideologies and we hate bid'ah. We hate innovation. People who try to interject in our religion. We dislike what the Ahbash are doing. They, are a, they work them. 
in the Rafid the Shia, the Shia Rafid, they're not even Muslim. And then the Ahbash work with them. And the Ahbash work with who? They work with those people who want to turn us away. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say fi kitabi al kareem about those people who, uh, what, what do they believe? He said, وَقَالَتْ الْيَهُودِ وَقَالَتْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that never will the Jews nor the Christians be pleased with you till you follow their religion. Say verily the guidance of Allah. That is the only guidance. And if you were to follow their desires after what you have received of knowledge, then you would have against Allah neither. You would have against Allah neither any wali. Or, nor a helper. So this, we're not going to follow that minhaj. We're not going to allow division in our community. We're not going to follow the ahbash. We're not going to worship with the ahbash. We're going to make dua against the ahbash. And we're going to call them to Quran and Sunnah, to lead bid'ah, to lead ma'asi, to lead the noob, to lead all this shirk and all this evil, and to ask them to leave working with the shayateen who want to harm the Muslims. But in fact, we find with many ahl bid'ah, and especially those who are the most extreme amongst them, that they work with the people of disbelief. And often they share disbelief with them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect the Muslims everywhere.